Technofiber rackets may not be as popular as rackets from the big four, but they are fantastic frames with unique playability that will make sense for a lot of players. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. I've been looking to do a Technofiber Rackets overview for a while now because I do have a bit of a soft spot for them. I was super excited to take these out for a demo and had a lot of fun hitting with them. Although I have to say I was a little cold. It was three degrees outside. I realize that number's lost on like 36% of our viewers or something like that, but yeah, just translates to cold in Fahrenheit. I actually am American. You might not know that about me, but I was born and raised in Hawaii. We just don't care about temperature there. So yeah, I don't know Fahrenheit. Anyways, Technofiber's best rackets are player's rackets before anything else, which puts them right up my alley. Players rackets are generally geared more toward control and have a strong emphasis on great feel and connection to the ball. Now I do need to note we don't carry every Technofiber racket. We decided not to bring in the TFX one so unfortunately I won't be talking about those today but I will be talking about the T-Fight 305, the TF40 305 and 315s, and then the Tempo 298 Ega. Before we go on though, as usual, remember that any of the rackets we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comment section what you want me to cover next. Okay, let's talk about some specs. All three of the rackets have a 98 square inch head size, the weights are in the name, so I'll just kind of put them up there. And then the TF40s have a 22 millimeter beam, the T-Fight has a 22.5 millimeter beam, and the Ega has a 23 millimeter beam. On paper, they're all very similar with only one millimeter separating them in terms of beam thickness. But when you start digging a little bit deeper, that's where it gets kind of interesting. The TF40s and Ega have 16 by 19 string patterns. The Ega's is noticeably more open, and we'll talk about how that translates to playability here in a bit. But the T-Fight 305 has a very interesting interesting 18 by 19 string pattern. That 1819 is one to keep in mind, but it gets even better with stiffness. The TF40s and T-Fight 305 flex at 64 RA unstrung, and then the Ega flexes at 71 RA, which is, yeah, pretty darn high, so that's another number to keep in mind. Finally, we've got swing weight. Now, these might be a little off spec, but what even is spec at this point anymore? But anyways, the Ega and the T-Fights have pretty substantial 330s swing weights, and it's much lower on the TF40s coming in around the 310s. That's it for the specs. We'll circle back to them as we get more into playability, but before we start talking about each individual racket, I want to talk about one area where all three of these rackets excel, and that's feel. Part of the reason why I had such a fun time hitting with these is because they each kind of have a very pro feel, and there's a few things that make up that pro vibe. For one, they are all foam filled. Foam is a dampening technology technically, but it's very different to all these technologies we're used to from the other brands because it provides such a pure and solid feel for the ball. The feel basically gets better and better the harder you hit. The foam seems to complement the graphite's natural flex, unlike these other stabilization and dampening technologies, which seem to get more muted the harder you hit and basically end up feeling like you're bottoming out the flex. This is part of the reason why a lot of pro stock rackets are foam filled, but of course, Technofiber is making a sacrifice by opting for foam instead of these more modern technologies. Injecting foam into the frame does help make the racket more solid to a certain extent, but it's not nearly as effective at increasing stability at a low static and swing weight. Each of these rackets kind of require high swing weights to be playable, which makes them more difficult to swing than a lot of other rackets out there. But honestly, to me, that kind of just adds to their pro feel because they just get better with customization. These are all wonderful platform rackets. A platform racket is a racket that is ripe for customization, either because it plays better with customization or because it responds well to a variety of weight distributions. Because the foam gives them such a pure feel, these are kind of like a blank canvas. You can add weight wherever you want and the racket will respond well no matter where you put that weight. I'll cover what customization I did to each frame when I talk about them more individually, but they all have that blank canvas sort of feel. Now you might be thinking, Luca, these all have different beam thicknesses and different stiffnesses. They can't just feel identical. And you're right, they all feel excellent, but all a bit different. The TF40s feel the most buttery soft. They flex at 64 and have the thinnest and most classic beam, so they have the most consistent flex of the three. The T-Fight is only half a millimeter thicker, but it feels quite a bit more modern. It does have a more firm feel altogether, although it is still a very clean feel, just a little more crisp and poppy. The Ega is very stiff, but honestly, it's not that uncomfortable, and it has that classic point-and-shoot style of control. We often associate stiff rackets with bad feel, because over the last 20 or so years, a lot of stiff rackets have had very overpowering dampening technologies, 
But I gotta say that foam filled frame with a very stiff flex feels pretty wonderful. You just get this fantastic crisp and super well-defined pop off contact. It's not the most forgiving feel, but when you hit it well, it is pretty darn sweet. So yeah, general PSA, don't just chalk off a racket because it's stiff. Stiff does not equal bad feel. All right, we'll move on to talking about individual rackets and why you might want to choose one over the other. Let's start with the Tempo 298 Iga. So, 23 millimeter beam, 71 RA, 98 square inch head size, and a pretty high swing weight. This racket is definitely unique and the playability backs up those specs. For one, it's really easy to generate power with. Like I mentioned earlier, there is tons of pop off the string bed, so when you get a hold of the ball, you can definitely launch it. The question then becomes, how do you control all that power? Well, one easy way would be to use spin, so it's a good thing that it's probably the most spin-friendly of the three. It has a very open 16 by 19 string pattern, and when you combine that with the high stiffness, you get plenty of string movement, not really any specific spin tech, but you'll never feel limited in your spin potential. In terms of solid control, at face value with no customization, it's honestly not the best. It's pretty light in stock form, and because it has so much weight concentrated in the hoop, it's kind of easy to lose control of the racket's face during your stroke. Then on contact, there's not really enough weight inside the handle to stabilize the frame, so you can sometimes get a pretty inconsistent and slightly fluttery response off the string bed. The thing is, because it's so light, it can take a ton of weight in the handle. I added a leather grip, I highly recommend you do the same, but honestly, you don't really need to stop there. You can pretty easily go up 15 grams without worrying you'll make this thing too difficult to use. That's what I did, and all that weight in the handle helped make this thing rock solid. It completely transformed the racket. It reminded me a little bit of the shift because it has so much power, so much spin, but then it's a 98 and has such good feel that you can really get dialed in like you would a proper control racket. It's also got a little RF 97 to it where you can just go pinging these huge shots all over the court. But keep in mind, when it's stiff like this, it's not going to be very forgiving, so you have to be on top of your game and you definitely need to play with spin. Also, just touching on comfort, be careful with this racket. I know I'm mentioned earlier that it's not uncomfortable and that foam filling does help to dampen it a little bit but it is still stiff so probably not the racket for you people with a history of joint problems and probably not something you want to be stringing tight with a stiff poly. All right, now moving on to the T-Fight 305. I want to call this racket a sleeping giant, but I feel like people kind of already know how good this thing is. You look at the thin beam, the pretty soft flex, and the 1819 string pattern, and you start thinking to yourself, okay, this is probably going to be another one of those nice control rackets, and it is, but this thing is also kind of insanely spin-friendly considering those specs. I can't exactly tell you why. I think it has something to do with that more modern shape and layup I mentioned earlier, but you get a lot more string movement than you would expect from an 18 mainer, and honestly more than a lot of 16 mainers. The really unique thing is that you get all that spin, but with a racket that has a pretty low launch angle. It's a pretty weird sensation at first, and you might put a few forehands into the net, but once you get used to it, it's really quite addictive. The low launch angle helps make it super consistent, and getting this amount of spin from a racket also this consistent is very rare. The one problem with the T-Fight that I think a lot of people will struggle to get used to at first is that it has a pretty bizarre balance, which gives it a weird swing pattern. Kind of a similar problem to what I had with the Iga, I struggled a little bit to control that racket face through contact. There's a ton of weight concentrated in the hoop, which definitely helps it spin, but it also just means you have a little bit less control over the face. Again, leather grip, just do it. But then, and it's kind of funny how I found this out, but add another 10 grams. I bought a used T-Fight in the previous version, but it was an L2 and I usually used an L3. So I ended up using a grip build and a leather grip and it was absolutely phenomenal like that. So I added the same amount of weight here and ta-da, Honestly, this is one of the most well-rounded sticks that way. Control, spin, power, consistency, stability, feel. They are all elite. Of course, at this point, it's over 320 grams static, so it's not necessarily easy to swing. But for those of you who can, this is a special, special racket at that spec. Now, it is kind of funny. As good as power and spin are on the T-Fight, I still think its best characteristic is control. Okay, it's not a truly classic control racket, and the sweet spot is a little bit bigger than the next rackets we're going to talk about. But it still has really good directional control, and it's pretty soft, so you do feel like you can guide the ball kind of where you want to put it. Okay, this video is going to be so long. The good news is we've made our way to the TF40s, which are definitely less unique than the last two. So I don't have as much to say, although knowing me, I could definitely say a lot. I'm mainly going to talk about the 305 because the 315 is basically just the 305 with the weight of a leather grip added to the handle. And I like leather grips, so I usually go lighter. They also have similarly low swing weights, so customization ends up being pretty much the same anyway. Although weirdly enough, the 315 actually has a lower swing weight. But anyways, the TF40 is your classic, classic control rack 
racket, and really everything here is geared toward optimizing control. Compared to the other two rackets, it has objectively the best feel. The sweet spot is gorgeously well defined and there's just this amazing softness where you get that addictive split second extra to control the ball. Also, the two that we carry are 1619s, but the string bed is still super dense, so really no inconsistencies there at all. Don't buy the 1820 because we don't have it. Kind of kidding. Not really though. In terms of power, it's what you would expect. It won't hold you back, but other than the 16 by 19 string pattern, there's not much here to help you out. It's a similar story with spin, although they are actually pretty spin friendly, but again, there's not much going on. So it'll feel solid for spin, but nothing artificial or over the top. Customization is not a must, but I do think both the 305 and 315 play much better with at least a mid 320 swing weight. When it's a racket this flexible, I like to put weight at three and nine because it helps make it more forgiving by expanding the sweet spot. Adding weight to the hoop will also give them more free power and you won't really feel a loss in control. These are just pure control sticks, some of the best on the market right now, and especially the 305 is one of the best platform rackets I've tried in a while. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully I was able to shed some light. I'm gonna wrap up the video here in a second, but just to finish it off, I'm gonna talk about who I think each of these rackets could be best for. The Iga is great for aggressive players who want to overpower their opponents. The T-Fight is just an overall fantastic racket that has tons of spin, but also plenty of consistency. And the TF40s are just pure classic control rackets. Those of you who want that know who you are. With all that said, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that if you do want to demo any of these rackets, you can come visit us in store, or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.